five. Did we just roll cold, yeah. cold open? Yeah, just cold, cold, cold open. open. Um, Perfect. So for those of you just catching up. <laughs> yeah. How long are we talking? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah, well, we don't like to do really super formal openings. Uh, we kind of used to. We used to, and it was just kind of, it felt very plasticky. Yeah. And, and cookie cutter. I'm like, let's just so, talk. Yeah, so. Right, um, we'll figure out where it starts. Right. Well, introductions first. Um, thank you guys for joining us today. We have a um, couple, well, someone who we've known for a few years now, and um, his counterpart, cohort, partner in crime, uh, Joe Cavanaugh is with us today as well. So Braden and, and Joe have jumped in the booth with us, and uh, we were just talking about what we're actually going to talk about, and um, <clears throat> we really don't have any direction whatsoever. So it, It's kind of like the other few podcasts I've done is we've talked about everything that we're going to talk about all the way up right. there, and then we sat down, we're like, what are we going to talk about now? Yeah, we had a half-hour conversation before we sat down. Yeah, we got to rehash. <laughs> practice. Yep, we practice rehash. conversation. Yeah, so, but... Um, Thanks for coming in for one, um, yeah. which is which is awesome for for both of you guys. I know you were just at the expo and you've been in I don't know various parts of the country. <laughs> I, I I just try and keep up with with what you're uh, what you're typically doing. I, you, you were just where were you last? <clears throat> Park City. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was just skiing. I was, <laughs> I, was, I, I was just skiing. You didn't have City. a bow on your back just in case. <laughs> no, no. I, I did see some animals, but no, no yeah. just skiing. So. So what uh, I reached out to Joe because um, Joe is a recon member with with NUMA um, yep. and just like a lot of organic and kind of uh, simple conversations said, hey, man, you know, how's it going? Whatever. And we've kind of went back and forth. And I said, hey, you want to come over sometime? And so appreciate it. it's good to meet you for one. And, yeah. and uh, number two, to, to come over and we'll we'll talk a little hunting and Braden. It's good to see a normal size hunter, too. Appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Adult, I always feel I always hunter. feel like I'm like a giant among. Well, you are. I am a giant <laughs> among others. But yeah. It's nice to be able to at least kind of look eye to eye with some people. Well, we understand it. You right, know? exactly. When Braden and is climbing under the stuff and we have to right. climb over, like, right. it's yeah. just, but yeah. I guess it's the same when we're climbing over stuff and you guys are struggling to climb over it as well. Yeah, I have to jump up to get on stuff and just step on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Braden and I have something in common. You guys yeah. have yeah. to yeah. But, uh, and then uh, Braden, who we were actually inter- introduced through kind of a business partner, and uh, oddly enough, uh, funny it's kind of a funny story because the first time we talked was after the – had you been after full draw, I think, or somewhere around there maybe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because that's when that? you got hooked on to, to No Limits. Yeah, and Francisco, or Kiko, as, as a lot of people call him, says – Hey, uh, yeah, you should talk to my buddy Braden. Like he he works. Uh, he's like big into archery and whatever. And I think it was in 2018 or some 18 or 19. And uh, as luck would have it, which I'm usually not very lucky, I managed to uh, to win one of the bows at Full Draw here in Denver. And so I called Braden. I'm like, Hey, man, um, I got a. I, I won that bow last night. And he's like, He. I remember, I'll never forget this. He goes. You, whoever you were with, you're like, I told him that, that boat would be in here tomorrow. <laughs> 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 and sure shit, I just handed it off to Braden. I go, yeah. here, give me whatever you think Wait, is, is good. you let him work on your bow? <laughs> I, uh, yes, I know. <laughs> but he worked on his, his other bow prior to that. Let me guess, and, it was and, a tough season for you then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just I just walk it around mainly, so it's same. Yeah, same. yeah. But uh, yeah, we've done. We're really good at walking them around. Yeah, uh, very good at it. Done it for years. Yeah, but um, yeah. So that was that was kind of interesting, and now um, that's obviously gotten you know manifested a little bit when I come over and uh, I, I'm I, I act like I'm you know the idiot, which is pretty easy to do, and I'm always like, all right, Braden, help, help me out here. Tell me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. And he's got a lot more experience than I do, so it's always helpful to have someone that good to see the progressions right like yeah. you see the people taking the steps and doing th- things yeah. differently and trying to get better so that's yeah all, from that's amateur to intermediate yeah very intermediate <laughs> I, I grew up with a shotgun in my I, hand mainly I, I, so i'm still intermediate so i've been doing it for a long time in the right. intermediate zone so yeah but um yeah so we we uh we enjoy you know getting opportunities to to talk shop as much as possible and yeah joe listen you know hear about uh you know some of the things i know obviously we were talking downstairs about being involved with numa and, yep. and kind of your history you know grew up in minnesota and i know you're a big kind of whitetail and mule deer fanatic and so just tell tell us a little about you know your kind of yeah lineage if you will yeah grew up in minnesota bow hunting at 12 that was the legal age when you could so um 
mean, I gave up playing animals at twelve. Easy. I was, I was, a, I was a killer. <laughs> now I was a killer of small animals, but they did die. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I gave up playing football. I didn't even want to. Anything in the fall that interfered with with hunting was was you know not something I wanted to do. And and I was actually I'm not a big gun person. I didn't even like rifle hunting because I was small, which is I grew, you know. Right, yeah. But I was small. I we hate, all hit our growth spurt. Yeah, yeah. So well, I most uh, of us at least. <laughs> right. But uh, still you're still waiting. It's, it's coming. Waiting. It's coming. coming. It's coming at 40. Yeah. That's when it's going to hit. Well, I'm, for, I'm late, 40 this late year. Developer. I thought it's 40. You're going to be 41? Yeah. Oh, God. You're not going to be able to keep up, man. Oh, stop. But, but yeah, so I started bow hunting and then, <laughs> um, you know, went to college and, and kind of put it on hold a little bit, moved to Florida. And uh, and then seven six years ago, I moved out to Denver. And that's when it kind of came back up. And I, I moved out here for that reason of just getting up in the mountains. I always loved, like, the thought of mule deer hunting in the high country, but never done it. Mm-hmm. Um, elk hunting, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, so now it's just I'm out here and really met a good group of guys and, you know, really spend probably more time in the mountains than I should. Um, There's you know. no such thing. I don't know. <laughs> you talk to talk to my coworkers and talk to some of the, the the lady friends that I talk to. Apparently, I spend too much time in the mountains. But uh, but yeah. So and then you know met Braden through No Limits. I guess I think so. I think it was through Fred. Yeah. And then um, yeah. And then we started hunting. Really, like the first time was last year. Was your mm-hmm. was your uh, we went on a few scouting trips. But then was when you had that elk tag last year. Two years two ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago when I had that elk tag, but yeah. So the first time we hunted together. Yep. But then I got connected through Numa because they were a Minnesota-based company at the time, and right. uh, obviously that, that's all changed. But I've kept that relationship, and and um, yeah, mm-hmm. really kind of grown with them from this their base line of products, and now yeah. they're coming out with a lot more. We were just talking about some of the stuff that I just got testing out, sizing that sort of thing. So. Um, I don't. I like to be a part of a, a company that listens, and I think yeah. they definitely do to us. And you know, with us being, you know, we talk about different sizes. Like everybody yeah. has different fits, and they offer that. And I think that's a big part of why I like working with them. Um, but yeah, so it's good. Um, and now just out here trying to, uh, you know, keep up with Braden in the mountains when we can, and and uh, <laughs> try to shoot uh, try to shoot some big animals. Yeah, so. uh, I know. Uh, and. and We'll talk about that too. When I hear, so I know last year was a huge year for you, Braden. You know, drew the uh, drew the Ram tag, yeah. and uh, Joe. I know you were there, except for uh, I believe the uh, the pack out, right? No, <laughs> he, no he was there for he was there oh, for wait, some of say, the pack out. Oh, oh. He was there for some of the pack out. I he packed, missed the second. Half I packed of it. my stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, you didn't you didn't promise to pack out. All you I didn't told, promise I, to put put me on a Ram. I, ha- I had a flight out the next day at like nine in the morning or so, it was something crazy and then that flight got canceled so <laughs> i could have been there good luck man <laughs> oh god but, no, that was we, great. With you we survived yeah. yeah he was he yeah. was he he he, he <laughs> sweated enough he sweated enough on those mountains for sure yeah. so yeah no that's that's awesome i uh and bled it, yeah, well, yeah. That's when you know it's it, it it counts, right? Like if there's not a little bit of blood of your own, right? right. Oh God, so, no, no. That's that's awesome. Well, um, talk about let, let's talk about that. I mean, for you, Braden. I mean, like how how many years had you been putting in for that? I think I had I think I had nine points, um, six weighted. I think I had nine points when I drew it. I can't remember because. I don't. I never expect to draw it, right? So right. I put in for it, and I'm like, at some point, I'm going to draw it, but I don't know how many points I have now. Right. Um, and Joe was like, "You're going to draw it. You're going to draw it." Because <laughs> Joe, Joe had been on a on, on the hunt the year before with with, with our buddy Fred, and uh, I joined him for for one day. And <laughs> how many how many days you guys put in on that one? So it's the same area, same unit, and. I think I don't know. I, you know, I don't want to turn it into a fishing story, but I'm pretty sure I was up there 32 days, and I think that was scouting and hunting. I wouldn't and, doubt it. You guys started in May, which was not May. smart. Like right. I remember, we were going up there, and like it was. I, there was one night where I thought we were going to die. It got so cold. It was the coldest I've ever camped, and we were right by a lake, and it was just it was brutal. But so Fred and I were up there a lot, and you know, ultimately Fred didn't fill his tag, but. I joke to everybody that I will never go up there again. <laughs> we, we all do. Like, we all do. We all, I, 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 right. I just finished a, um, the article on it for, for Eastman, and uh, 
in there I say that exact statement. I'm like, we all joke about we'll never go back to this unit, but then next thing you know, we're yeah. back in the we're back of the trailhead. Here we go again, you know. Yeah. But it's it's just that it, yeah. We it's we so, did, we've done that too. Like I yeah. think I think we spent for archery elk season. I mean, we we spent like four or five years where. It just took us that long to figure out like right. where the hell are the elk at right mm-hmm. and, and like getting them pattern where it's like yeah of course you're going to run into some every now and then and of course as it would be with elk it's in the bottom of the hole right like it's eight nine hundred feet straight freaking down you're grabbing yep. trees and once you get down in there there's this canopy and guess what it's like a hundred yards from where an outfitter works and they're just buffering that line the entire time and you know and so we've drug whatever in the last five or six or seven years we think we've drug like gone down that godforsaken mountain too many times you guys made your own trail uh, you guys have your own path yeah pretty much a couple of years ago we started using onyx more than we used to use the garmin gps's Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then when we started using the onyx we actually found more efficient ways to get down there just reading oh, the terrains yeah right? you know and, and where we were camped and the and the route we were going down we figured out was it was taking us like 20 minutes longer than it should have so we one year we we camped in a different spot because somebody was in our typical spot and i'm looking at the maps going it looks like we can just like shoot this gap right here and we're there and sure enough we tried it and it was like 20 minutes from camp to you know the the area that we would normally you know bust out into and i was like well shit that didn't take us very long at all yeah right yeah and and i was like wait and it wasn't that difficult to get in there and there was kind of a path that like maybe it had been used by a couple of guys in years past but yeah we trailblazed that path the rest of the time and every year we've gone back there we've trailblazed you you know that path yeah but it's it's the same thing like you said where it's like i every year i'm like shit are we really gonna go back down in that freaking hole and you're like all right, when we leaving? Yeah, right. <laughs> and then here, here we are, here stand, we are. standing there every day. See, going. normally when I look on a map and I try to do that, and I'm like, oh, this will work out. It never works yeah. out. Well, we <laughs> like, did. I don't. I, I don't ever trust him. We, trust we did him that in, on the map. No, nope. yeah. <laughs> we, we did that one time, and and we felt like, oh yeah, we can just get you know walk this ridge, and yeah, we ended up walking through a swamp, and I'm like, oh, this is not easy yeah. at all. This sucks. Oh, uh, so well, well, the the first year talking about that, like that spot that that same spot. Darby killed a bull, and we always like yeah, another t- oh, God, t- the two t- tenths of a mile t- 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 shirt moment. He's like, it's just two tenths of a mile, it's just right <laughs> yeah, here, yeah. right? You know how that goes. Yeah. So here we are. We're, we're all right. excited too. We're like, we're this is going to be an easy down. path. The worst yeah. too, because you're like two yeah. tenths. That's nothing. Yeah. No, that's, no, that's, that's, that's like, a cakewalk. That's, yeah. That's yeah. the finisher, right? Yeah. That's the end of the workout. You're yeah. like, I'm yeah. going to set this thing down. So seven miles later. Yeah. So we get we get all the way down in there. Get a you know get it packed up, and we're heading back out. And like he said, you know, had we spent a little bit more time looking like all right how can we get out of here easier right. we just went like this you yeah know, we, bar- we bear up. crawled up the side of a mountain and we could and we would have just contoured like we could have just slow yeah, walked two it days out later there, we know? contoured and i was like that would have been so much easier with yeah. 80 pounds on my back than right. climbing hand over yeah. fist to get up the side of a mountain right I d- i've done that to Braden once when we were in the, actually the same mountain range and i just I, you didn't have your gps or something because i had it on my phone and it was remember the it said there was a trail and it wasn't a trail. Like there was a trail on the on Onyx, right? And oh. then it's just not there, right? And no, I learned a valuable lesson on, on that trip. <laughs> Let's talk about that. My valuable lesson is never, never don't look at a map to a place you're going with somebody else relying on them and know what they're looking at. <laughs> I had an idea. I knew where I was going. I just thought there would be a yeah. trail there, and there wasn't. Right. I'm like, I'm on it. Yeah. And I just kept on telling Brett, it's just right up here. It's just right <laughs> up here. <laughs> it's, right, it's just right over here. And then, and then it was like a scree feel. And we had to camp at, like, if the lake wasn't, like, lower or the pond or whatever, we had to, there was nowhere to camp except for, like, on the sandbar. And it was like mud. Right. And, <laughs> and then there was no water. Like, yeah, it was a great, yeah. yeah. Well, well I got, I'm, I'm the opposite. Like, uh, he he's always doing this. Oh, he's like, I have the worst sense of direction. He's like this. Like I'm, I'm in the I'm woods. Like, I'm like I have no dude, idea where we're going. Dude, just keep going that way. Yeah. Just please keep going that way. Yeah. Like, stop looking at your fucking. I phone. have to. It's like <laughs> me like double checking. Right. Yeah. Like, like, I, 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 we've hunted long enough now to where I've gotten to the point where I'm like, all right, Joel knows where he's going. Right. But early on, this you know, and I'm I'm fairly novice to the woods. Right. I'm like you know, ten steps. Oh, we got to go that way. He's like, I know we've been going that way. <laughs> I was like, okay. I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. My 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 directionality has gotten a little bit better, but good. Not a ton. Yeah. Good. 
So. Well, keep, keep practicing. Yeah, well, it's yeah. Like, you know, and it's the same thing. I, I'm looking for a trail, right? And then you get on that trail, and then, then there's, you know, it looks like somebody dumped a, botch of, a box of matchsticks out on the trail, and you're like, well, shit, now what are you going to do? Yeah. Now which way are we going to go? Right. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So. No. Usually it just becomes whatever direction. we're Either we're going up or we're going down. It's well, that was on the, sh- the sheep hunt. It was just, there was no, it was straight up or straight down. Yeah. I right. mean, and that's like, you know, we'll kind of get that first because we, you went on how many scouting trips? Twice, three, three weekends. Three week, yeah, three weekends. Right, and then you know we, I came in there on opener with you. No, two weekends. I went, went two weekends. Okay, right? yeah. Because I went uh, Fred and Dana. Uh, right. To have the mosquito. Hell, oh hell, yeah, hell yeah. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah. Well, I because that was that was right around ta- when Tack was because she was there and I I remember she. It was her whole leg was yeah, just... Yeah, she was still eating up after yeah, that. It was right after. Yeah, it was right, right before tack. Right, it was right, right. before um, sunlight. So we went up that weekend, and then I went up on a solo trip uh, to a different area, and then we went up, we were up there opener. Yeah, opener was bad. We got... I mean, it wasn't even... You couldn't even hunt. Socked in, basically. Yeah, it rained out. Couldn't yeah. couldn't see anything. Um, Didn't see a ram. That was good. Yeah, that was that was disappointing because there was a good ram in there uh, a few weeks prior. Well, that was a good a good thing that we talked about. So we had planned to be up because I always say if you're planning, if you have five days, hunt five days, and you and I both agree on that. Like let's stay in, right. and it was supposed to just continually to get worse. And it was I think opener was on Saturday. Yeah. Or uh, Sunday. The first August first. Yeah. Whenever that. So, it, it landed on a Saturday this year. I'm and sure. uh, and you're like we're staying, and I'm like buddy i don't do it was <laughs> like we can't even how see torn, how torn was i yeah i, I was beating myself up because i hate that's the one thing is i hate coming off the mountain early right yeah, that's the one thing and, yeah. and it just didn't make sense yeah it didn't make sense we're planning there. we're gonna stay there till wednesday i think yeah and i'm like dude tuesday's gonna be worse wednesday yeah. maybe afternoon will clear up but we're gonna be hiking out either way yeah so we, well, we bailed out we then. get down yeah we bail out and it's actually a good thing we did because uh, Fred's buddy who lives in town there, he called Fred and was like, "Hey, your buddy's still up there." And he's like, "No, I think they got down." He goes, "Cause he's just hammering up there." Yeah. Just. We walked out for like a mile, and I'm not even exaggerating. It, I have a video of it. It it's like a foot of water on the trail. Like they, a they, rushing like, river. It was like down a down flood, and it was so. Wow. We had hunted in there, Fred and I, and you came in there too. Um, and the basin's wicked, but like there's just a regular creek and it was always flowing. There was no, but this like must have had a flash flood because it wiped out everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you couldn't cross any of the creek crossings yeah, all and the nothing. Natural creek crossings are like man made natural. Ro- roaring, roaring rivers. Yeah. 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 yeah and With there was now no... beaver, like beaver dams. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> just matched, they smashed up there. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, that first weekend was, was, was brutal. But honestly, I think it was the only reason that the second weekend why we, Cause we were like, up oh, chalk that one up for we're not going back up there. Right, because right. hiking down was so bad. I was like, well, three because we were going back what three days later, yeah, two or three days later, um, pretty quick turnaround. And uh, I was like, well, that's not going to be dry by the time we go. I'm like, right. what are you going to hike up in Crocs? Right, yeah. right. I thought about it, but I was like, that's <laughs> like I don't really want to start a five day sheep hunt with wet feet. Right, you know? yeah. Um, and so a, we went to Plan B. Yeah, uh, and. I mean, maybe, I mean, that's kind of a, a good conversation too, right? Is, is I think a lot of times people underestimate some of those things, right? And, and yep. you, you play this, you wager on this, like, ah, eh, like we're tough, we'll stick it out, you know, and you, right. you play that game. And, um, and then at the same time, you look at it, like with rain, especially where you go, man, if things start sliding around and we can't navigate, or like you said, if you got to yep. go up and down, like things can get a little sideways fast. And, right. Two yeah. years ago, when we went up to uh, to our unit, whoops, hit the microphone there. Jeez. When we went up to our unit, remember it was snowing. He's got curveball fingers. Yeah, right? yeah, right. It was snowing, right? And and remember, Full we on. had that conversation. Like, do you really want to go? And I'm looking at the weather, going, yeah. "It's four oh, in the it's, morning." Yeah, I'm calling like, him. Oh, like, are like, we really doing it's, this? It's going to end by like nine or ten. We'll be good. We'll be good, yeah. right? And then we get to the trailhead, and there's like six inches of snow on the ground, and it's still coming down sideways. Right, and we're mm-hmm. packing everything into our trailer, you know, getting on the ATV and dragging it in and right. setting up in the snow. And I'm like, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Like in my mind, I was like, I want to be here. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I, I'm not gonna let a little snow kind of ruin this parade. Right. I, right. And it, it ended up being all right, 
but there was a there was a sketchy moment there where we were like, yeah. do you want to go tomorrow or do you want to wait for this <laughs> to kind happens. of pass? Yeah. Right, right. Well, and that's a tough part about it because most people have their days off and they're locked in. Right. right. You know, yeah. and fortunately, Braden, you know, you had to change a few things with your work schedule. Mine was fairly flexible as long as I had cell service a few times, check some emails, emails and yeah. stuff. And I just told him, I'm like, hey, man, let's just dump out now get out of there and then we'll come back and we'll re rehash everything and i go it's not like we're not ma macho men to be like oh we stayed up in that it was fine because we, we, we would have survived it right. would just been no hunting i mean at some right. of the times right. we you couldn't even see camping. It. yeah and like in literally the rain. in the in rain, rain. Right, right. yeah and so it was a great choice because then we jumped to our, our like backup plan and yeah. you know and that's when i mean which was one of the worst hikes I've ever, ever ever experienced, but we got in there and it was great. I mean, you know, weather was perfect. That that storm had rolled through, and three days later it was perfect. You know, minus the smoke, I guess, was the only yeah, thing that we really had to thing. deal yeah. with. So, which is where the the rain actually was a blessing, right? A little bit where it kind of washed some of that. Because well, that it was, was after after the rain that next weekend uh, we were back in there. That's when the, the smoke settled in because the fire. It was yeah. it was it, bad. It, it I dry, mean, like it, things had dried up a little bit. So. Right. The fires from all around and smoke had pushed in. It was it was bad. Yeah. But going back to like what you're talking about, you know, decisions we make, right? The the scouting trip on up. I mean, any anything on the mountains is trying to kill you essentially one way or another, right? Mother Nature has her ways and Sure. I mean, the first weekend it was the mosquitoes. The the second weekend when they're solo, I had to hide under a rock on top of a mountain. I don't know that that was the smartest idea, but <laughs> Because a lightning storm moved in, yeah. you know, you just get stuck up there, and, yeah. and it's like, oh, just look over this one more ridge. Right. And you're like, I can beat that storm, and the next thing you know, I'm sprinting down the yeah. mountain, you know? Right. It just, all these, every, everything's trying, it's trying to get you, you know? Yeah. Which is, it's, I think that's why we do it, though, because yeah. we're, we get so comfortable in this everyday life sometimes, I think yeah. we need that, you know, a little yeah. bit of like, hundred percent, a little bit at least, you there's know? There's a weird part where I think there's this like devilish enjoyment about it, where you're like, yeah, let's let's uh let's see what we're made of. Oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah. you know, especially like, you know, Brayden and I, we're not pushing each other like much, but I, I definitely didn't want to like let him down. Like that's a crazy thing. Like people right. ask me, I was out there with Fred, and then with Brayden, and they're like, "Why'd you do it?" I'm like, "Well, number one, it was an epic hunt. Like right. you're putting yourself in some areas that like not a lot of people have been in, and right. then you're and then you're hunting. But then also people are like, "Oh, it's probably pretty easy for you." I'm like I don't I felt a lot of pressure like right. I'm like the one time when we found the Rams like and I was like trying to find them where they were going you're like they saw it like and we're I'm like I don't think they did but then I'm like shit did I just screw this up <laughs> like <laughs> like you know it's on it's kind of on me too you know yeah. so that's kind of the you know a little bit crazy part about being like the I, I always say the guide but uh, not the guy, just like the buddy helping out. Because, yeah. I mean, sheep yeah. hunting, you need – it would be very hard to do with one person, I think. Like, you need that spotter, oh, double yeah, eyes. Extra, or so eyes. And, it's yeah. always good to have an extra set of eyes. Yeah. Oh, regardless yeah. of yeah. whatever kind of hunting. Yeah. Especially if you have Braden's eyes to start right. with. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I, but I think I think that like even that you know that sense of adventure is something that you know like Joel and I have talked about like we've done kind of the basic hunts like it's like what's the next progression in yeah. the hunting world is you know we've talked about doing a backcountry hunt where we you know we put camp on our backs and go in and uh, and set up camp and then camp out from there and, and hunt out from there and it's I think it's just that sense of adventure that you kind of want to push yourself a little bit you feel like you've I don't want to say you've mastered the basics but we've you've, mastered nothing we, you're right yeah. <laughs> but you know what i mean it's like that that where you almost have like a sense of purpose right yeah. and it's like you you know and call it a masculine thing or whatever it is but you just you want to go see if you can prove it to yourself that you can do that. that's why people do things like tough mutters and iron mans and things like that they just yeah. want to see if they can prove to themselves that they are tougher than they think they are right yeah right and yeah. i think that's what you know backcountry hunting and you know going up to 12,000 14,000 feet looking for rams and and you know scurrying across scree fields and you know all that other stuff that you're doing is it's it sounds super adventurous right and people are like oh i want to try that that sounds like, like fun right right and then you get then you get up there and you're like man i made a huge mistake but, <laughs> but when, i'm gonna stick you, i'm gonna stick this one out and when, see what happens when you're yeah. doing it it's not it, i don't feel as adventurous right right, right. when the sweat, like it sounded good on burning, paper burning in my eyes yeah. and you know and right. your body but, aches yeah. and you're yep. freezing cold and yeah you're running low on water like but all those things we had a good time like we never oh, got yeah. in do it like we were we kept it pretty light you know yeah. i mean we it did it was helpful that we 
found Rams, I guess, on, what, what day, <laughs> in the second day. <laughs> second day. It's always better when you see him. Yeah. yeah. We've but had a lot of hunts where it's like, oh, I wonder what's over that tree. Yeah, but still, like, we were getting up way early and climbing 1,000, 1,200 feet each morning just to get up to the glassing spot and then to see nothing and really just continuing to keep climbing. I don't know. I felt like it was pretty fun. Like, I, I didn't, like... Oh, I had a, I had a blast. With Fred's hunt, it got, probably because it was, like, day 32, it got, like heavy like right. it was like right. fred and i kind of frustration section. frustration oh, yeah, yeah. not seeing animals kind of spooking some animals but yeah you know that first weekend was fun because tommy came up there we were all but we couldn't do anything other than sit at the damn tents <laughs> yeah, and just like in our rain gear and just like hang out it was right. fun yeah um but the second weekend it, that was by far and away the hardest i don't know about you i haven't done anything that hard um, like in the mountains, like hunting wise, I, I don't. I would say it's probably one of the harder it was, basins I've ever been into. It was fairly difficult. Yeah, I, I would, <laughs> difficult I in terms would, of like like the the steepness of your climbs, or it's just the scree, or just everything. everything. It was just length, up. just the way the the hike started. It was just it, yeah. yeah, it was yeah, brutal. Getting, getting up in there, um, there was no trail. It was right. all blown over. So it was like yeah. that. That was what we joked about, like. You and I would be going yeah, over things. Over he going was under. going under. Yeah. Like it was that right at that level. Like we couldn't do anything about it. But finally, um, there was parts that just jump on top of them. Right. Like, yeah. You know. I mean, we probably went a hundred yards or more on, on a few spots where we just zigzagged with the deadfall, like right. climbing up. Yeah. A, I mean, it was horrible. Yeah, we've got pictures of a place of a couple of places like that too. Like, dude, I haven't touched the ground in like a hundred yards. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. You're right. just like hopscotching yeah. and you feel like you're doing like a Mission Impossible, like going through laser beams and stuff, right? Like, yeah. Trying to get under this log and over that log and well yeah and and to kind of like piggyback off of that like just get you guys kind of opinion because i think you know we talked about this like kind of <clears throat> machoism to to some of this stuff and like there's an allure to it you know like all of us like oh you know and, and you hear guys that kind of like wear their mileage as like a badge of honor and things right. like that you know and like i think that's great you know like i heard just the other day someone was like oh yeah i think in 10 days we did 110 miles and i'm like good man good for you <laughs> right and, I, and like i sit back and go i'm gonna try and do it in 50 if i can yeah. right like mm -hmm. and 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 so like talk about that from you guys perspective because i think there's a level of it where there's there's a, a non-negotiable in the commitment that you have to have right and we've talked to like guides and stuff like that that'll all say well talking about training i told you i wasn't gonna talk about training we'll do just a, just a touch <laughs> right and and guys will say well We'll, we'll tell clients that their success rate typically is going to be determined upon like what their physical capability is, right? right? I.e. conditioning and preparation, right? And so if you just take that from a generalized standpoint and say, all right, let's say you're just, you're, you're ready at some level, right? Whatever the acceptable level is, like how do you guys kind of approach how you go about that because i think that there's there's ways with which you can be on that one side where you're like oh yeah let's just go kill ourselves every day and then there's the other side where it's like nah screw it like we're just going to go up there and drink beer which <laughs> hey, hey that's your thing that's yeah, cool too right. right like i've had plenty of hunts we went up and had beers every night and whatever and now we're kind of somewhere uh, somewhere in the middle of that right and then there's a part of you that goes all right knowing your capability no know, yeah. knowing like you know what your expectations are like talk a little bit about like how do you guys go about that part of it in terms of you know you look at an area or whatever and, and like pace and coverage and and stuff like that that you, you know do you guys put any of that on expectation or like just hmm. i just go yeah just you know, go. It, it's just I, I, kind of the same and, and i do train <laughs> but like i have actually well, been, here, been putting here, in two here's a days something that i've learned when, when you started the question i was thinking about it and i was like one thing I've learned is is I used to think like you you had to do what I did to to be successful, or you had to do what someone who's very very fit did right. to be successful in the backcountry. And what I've learned is that's not absolutely true. Like I've I've hunted with guys that can go and go and go and don't work out at all. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, it, it's helpful. I have to do it for me yeah, mentally. I, I do. My game. That's what I have to do. Yeah. But. I know guys who don't, so I, I don't get yeah, know, yeah. I, I, my expectations. Yeah. Like, I, I just got to do what I do and, right. and, and get ready to go. Now, if, if say I got injured and I couldn't work out for a month before the season started, I'd still be confident going into the, going to the yeah, mountains yeah. mentally right. that, yeah. that I could get 
I think that's the biggest thing is mentally. Done. It's a mental game. You I mean, know, especially like it's, for the, the sheep tag, we knew what we were getting into, and there was no – we weren't stopping halfway because right. w- what good would that do? Like the first hike in, like we were like two hours longer than we thought. Yeah. Like it was a bitch. Like we literally were like, oh, we should be there by this time. We'll be able to, we'll be able to get a little glassing session. We were like – two miles away and the sun was going down and we're like we better get our headlamps out like <laughs> and i go we don't even know where we're camping we luckily we had uh, a a friend of well both of ours it became one of a, a good buddy of mine they had hunted it the year prior so he did those guys another, did another help a small with world thing I, I went to college with yeah this guy's this other guy's friend anyway yeah small and, world thing. yeah andrew and ryan good dudes and they they helped us right out and they're like you're gonna camp andrew was like you're gonna camp here so we knew it we just had to get there so there's no doubt in our mind but when we found those rams we both were like oh, shit what are we gonna do now and we had to yeah. like drop go, and like we weren't gonna lose these rams so yeah. he's everything I told Bert, changes as soon as the target is acquired yeah right? <laughs> well and then we, we set this great game plan and we had all this like planned out, and you know, there's no cell service. We our, our walkie talkies didn't work, so it was like he's gonna go pop his camp and go drop it somewhere, and then he's gonna go up and then like signal me that he's good. Well, the plan that we put in place was great on paper. Sure. So then when I came down it and went up, it worked great. But that hike up was probably the like that like, was like there was two times where and we were by ourselves. If a rock had just slipped a different way. It, you know, I'm not saying I was going to die, but uh, there was a couple times where we were, like, cutting up through shoots, and, like, I just, like, stuck my arms out, and, like, all the rocks just slid out from underneath me, and I'm like, oh, God, like, <laughs> where are we? Right. Like, and, literally like, setting my bow up above me and climbing, because I was first to set, like, I'm yeah. trying to find this path. That yeah. We looked at it, you know, you always look at something from the other from the other side, and you're like, sure. all right, we can just, I, can, I was like, I can just slide up that, that should be a little ledge. Right. I think it was work up that. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. But we had there. no we had no other choice. Yeah. Like right. that's where the vantage point was going to be. That's where we were going to see him. But then when I got up there, I'm like, "Hey man, where did you go?" And he's like, yeah. "Well, I went through there." And I'm like, "Oh, I took this way." And he's like, "Yeah, we can't go my way." I'm like, "Well, we definitely can't go my way." <laughs> right. So then we're sitting there going, "How the hell are we going to get down back yeah. to our camp?" And right. it just turned out we had to make a big loop. But yeah. you know, I, you know, pace is one thing. I will say, like to go back to your question, like, you know, there'll be a time where like. If Braden's leading and I'm on his heels, I'm probably pushing him a little bit. Or, you know, he's holding it up. So I do think there is something like that, especially if you're hunting with someone maybe that isn't, you know, has much endurance. You might want to, like, scale that back because otherwise yeah. you might blow your legs up the first yeah. day and you might be screwed yeah. well, the next two times, days. How many times have you been on a hunt with a guy that's just a mountain goat, right? And he's just he's just got legs for climbing, yeah. right? Yeah. And he just goes and goes and goes and you're sitting back there sucking wind going, dude, hold on. Like, I need to catch my breath. And then you take 10 seconds. All right, hold on. I got to take my breath. You yeah. know what I mean? And doing all that stuff. But I think, like, even going back to just the, the, the base question is, it's not like there's a playbook right, yeah. for any of these hunts. Right. So you've got to make those decisions on your physical exertion on the fly, right? Yeah. Like, you guys are looking at a shoot going, all right, this should be easy. And then you get in there and you're like, shit, this is not easy. Like, do we want to expend the energy to get through this? Or do we want to pull back and right. you know, rethink how we're going to approach this? Right. You know, yeah, right. a different slot. Like maybe it's a longer, easier route to get back instead of expending the the energy getting through that and you know being dangerous or dying or, or getting hurt. Right. Right. Now you're like, well, you know what? If we just go around this, we'll be okay. It's just going to take us a little longer. Yep. I I ran into that on that on that hunt actually. After when I when I bumped those rams on the first time, went oh, out yeah. of the saddle, and I couldn't come down the face that I just kind of came up because. They could see me there on the other side of the basin of the drainage and was watching them so i had to slip back into the basin behind us well the rock face that he was talking about was the fate was the part of the face of that basin so that just continued all the way back into the basin mm-hmm. so there was i think there was five times i counted that i'd hike down to an edge and i'm like oh i could probably sneak down through here and i'd have to hike back up because there'd literally be eight ten foot drop and right. there's no way i could climb down so i'd have to hike back up straight up and around and find another way and find another way to find another yep. it took me another half mile into the base and just from right. jumping, yeah. different jumping, things. jumping right. myself and then before i ended up back and coming around yeah. right around the well, well, as i said there's no trails right so you've got no. to blaze your own trail yep. there no and i think that's a good point because in that situation we found the rams we re- we had to relocate camp which was a, a kind of a bitch in itself and really found just got like 
lucky. You talk about looking at a map, and we both were like, well, this looks good. And luckily <laughs> it did, but we were like, her tents were like on top of each other because right. it was the only flat part. But when we found the Rams, we had a choice. We were like the next morning, and I was like, do we split up? Do we stick together? Well, ultimately we split up, and I saw the Rams, and they were, or no, you saw the Rams, and they were above me. So we went up, it was basically a box canyon, and we went up both sides. Mm-hmm. And he saw the ramp, and they were above me. So basically, we would have flip flopped. He would have killed, or right. I had the tag. He, would, uh, you know, it would yeah, have been easy. Yeah. Right. So then he had to go all the way down, and then we basically just flip flopped, and then he bumped Good up. Luck, dude. Oh, let's <laughs> get like, yeah. high five. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm like, so then we that happened. He bumped some, and they run all the way around. I'm like, dude, you got to come back, all the way back. Back. To hit where he was at. <laughs> right. So, so, right so you should have just bumped him and you want to run right <laughs> totally, in. Totally, <laughs> right? You know, hindsight, you're right. But, we, you know, yeah. we had a 1,000, I think it was at least a 1,000, maybe 1,200 vert to get up to where we were going to glass from. And then you had to drop down. So then we're at, you know, another... 2400 and then you had to come all the way down and then come all the way back up and i remember like you talk about a game plan and i looked at him this is a one time in the trip where i was like okay i should probably fuck with you a little bit and joke and he was not (laughs) having it like he was so pissed like i'm taking pictures of him like just hiking up this steep thing drooling like yes it was was that that point where like it it was because i literally had it was what six eight hours later when from when i left you yeah Went up and over that up and over that mountain, dropped down the backside, came back around. I literally was coming around the bottom of that mountain, and I got a. We had walkie-talkie service, and he's like, "Hey, he sounds like sounds like he's laying on a beach with a fucking Corona." Sorry, he's like, he's like, "Hey, what's up? What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Fucking dying, you know." And he's like, "Well, you camp because because I wasn't very far from camp, right? You know." And he's like, "Well, you just gonna go back to camp?" And it was like two in the afternoon, three, right? Three and I chasing, and I'm like. No, I'm going to look around the corner for these rams, and then I might think about it if I don't see them. And got off the walkie-talkie, and I got off, and there was this split thought. I'm like, God, I hope I don't hope to see these rams, you know? And first thing you do, I poke around that corner. I'm like, oh, there they are. Then I'm like, all right, so now we got to sneak, got to climb back up to him. But mm-hmm. the best part you know? was is so we, we're obviously trying to go light. And, you know, yeah. I hadn't been doing much. I You know, I hiked down, and I had, I don't know, maybe a full Nalgene or what, so, uh, maybe a little bit extra. And But I've just been, like, hanging out on this face. I have cell service. Like, I'm Instagramming. Like, I'm, like, I'm like answering work emails. I'm taking work calls. And little did I know. drooling over there. Oh, he's, I didn't know he was, like, couldn't find a way down, all this stuff. But I, I didn't know that the Rams also were only, like, to the edge of the cliff. 200 yards maybe right, 250 look, and yeah. i'm literally talking just like this on my phone like with my coworkers, and you know i'm not i don't have a care in the world and and you know he's hit me up on the radio he's like where are you where i'm like we'll go where we were and then i'm like hey but could you grab me some more water and i there was like a silence and then i like thought about it i'm like oh that probably like i have plenty but i was just thinking we might be up here all day and i don't know what you said but i could tell in the tone of your voice i don't know you're like why don't you just go fuck yourself or something no i did not because you had done it for me the day before but i I was up there i was like hey grab me some water on your way up so he grabbed me some water so i i was like there probably was a moment i was like mother and then i was like (laughs) All right, he got me some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get him back. Turnabout's you know, fair play. Yeah, yeah. Fair play. even though I'm dragging ass up here. But he was like, I mean, you were probably at uh, well over three thousand just gain that day. Had to be. You had to be at that. And I'm like, all right, man, what do you want to do? And I and I like uh, we talked about it. We were like, you can go in and blow them out. And, or we can go up, try to look to see where they are, make a game plan for the morning. And then I think like you came, you're like. I, I think you said something. You were like, "I literally well, going said, in." I literally said, "Joe, I'm either going to scare these fucking rams out of the country, or I'm going to shoot one." Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "You go up there. I'm going over here, and let's go." Yeah. So yeah. I went up. So he he was there, and I'm like, "Dude, give me like, because I probably had another six eight hundred vert to get to the top, so I could overlook this whole basin. So if they would go anywhere, I would be able to see where they went." Right. And I remember, I'm like, "Dude, just give me like six seven minutes." And I was gassed, like, and I hadn't done much all day. I mean, I still climbed, you know, 2,000 vert or whatever, but but I went up there, and by the time I crested over, I was like, all right, he's probably going to go. And I'm like, it's kind of windy, but not much, and I just hear, like, ding like, and I'm like, was that him shooting? I'm like, no way. And then I'm like, there's no way he got to him that quickly. 
And then all of a sudden, I just hear scree running everywhere or like rocks rolling everywhere. And like you could hear them on the rocks. Yeah. I'm not seeing them. And I'm like, oh, damn it. I'm like, he, he missed like for sure. Right. So then all of a sudden, I think you like, I think we had cell service and you like called me. You're like, hey, man, I, I shot. And I'm like, that's all I need to hear. I didn't even know if you hit or whatever. Right. So I ran down to you. And then you, you could kind of take it from there. Cause it's so right after you busted your, your hump to get up seven, 800 feet. Yeah. And I he did, calls I you and says, I shot. Then you had to run. Back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was good. He chose because, to run. Yeah. Because I wanted to see where they were going. Because they were going to go somewhere. And like, they, they go quite a ways. Like, right. when they, like, when you bumped them, these things, like, what would take a human maybe like five hours? They didn't like two and a half minutes like right. it was insane like i was watching them i mean like leaping off cliffs right like in it was a scree field like, yes. right. like they were jumping onto a football field right, right. right. yeah it's a scree field like they're incredible but yeah um yeah i just I, I i knew where they're at i'd marked some trees from the bottom like if i can get to those trees because they put themselves in this little cut um on the face on this cliff face there was this little cut which probably their safe zone they spent when we first saw them, they spent some time in that area, too. So yep. it was kind of their safe zone, I think. And while it was safe for them for pretty much anything else, it wasn't for a, a bow hunter. So right, right. it was perfect. Actually, I was like, oh, there's a couple trees on the top I can get behind. And I just snuck on the edge. And, um, I mean, it was all it, it was just all stacked granite. So the, the biggest thing I had to be careful of was, you know, stepping on a loose one or something. But the wind was blowing down where I was at. The wind was blowing pretty hard. Um, it actually was blowing to the rams, but it was the way that mountain worked is that it, it, there was a cliff edge and they were down in it and it was blowing hard enough that I, I was just like, right it's, over the it's top. just blowing yeah. right over the top and it was actually getting pulled and I'm like, it's just blowing right over the top. And when I got to that edge and looked over and I, I saw the, the ram's ass, that white ass down on this, this spine down there. And I was like, Oh, right there. And it peeked between the branches and got a range and it was uh 66 and i'm like that looks farther than 66 <laughs> i'm like hit it again 66. i'm like all right shot or drew and, and that wind was pretty bad and my nerves i thought pin i wouldn't settle and I'm like, say it say it do pull, this pull 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 <laughs> settle the pin pin didn't settle pull right. pull pull shot broke let it rip i yeah. don't know what happened you know <laughs> that's kind of what happened i was like oh and then the, the rams kind of just like scattered and stuff i i I'd missed right and they kind of just scattered and then right back into the same positions and okay he'll give me another shot and knew the knew the yard then and that time the pin did settle really well and shot broke clean and those rams took off well there was two mature rams in the group and they were standing next to each other one of them was the one i shot they broke off to the to the right up towards the the basin and disappeared so i couldn't see them around that spine and there's a couple of smaller banana heads younger ones down below me that took off and ran out into the bottom in this open scree field that i could see and i'm watching one of the little ones he's standing there he, he didn't know what the hell's happening right he, he's looking around looking uphill looking up the basin and all of a sudden he looks i see him turn and look up where those bigger ramps had gone and i look and I see that one of those rams just come charging, hauling ass down that through that scree field towards that little ram. I'm like, that thing's running really fast. And then all of a sudden, I watched its front legs just give out and it just did just face first right into the into the scree. Snow plowed him. Snow plowed. Yeah. Like he he hit his head and then he got up. And I'm like, those things don't normally trip. Right. And, it, and yeah. that was about the same time I saw this, you know, apple sized uh, blood spot on his back. I'm like, oh, he's dead. He's gonna die. He goes up to that little. He's still running full speed, but he goes up to that little ram. He's trying to slow down and does a little little butt twirl, you know. And the, mm -hmm. when they're, they're kind of staggering, does that, and then he death runs another hundred and fifty hundred yards, hundred and fifty yards mm -hmm. maybe. But I couldn't see him go down. So there was that time period of yeah. you know waiting on him and just chilling out and sitting down and made some phone calls, yeah, texting text people. Well, and that's the thing. When you came down, I was like, all right, tell me what happened. 
I've been around, you know, some. Joe's, Joe's my, my go to on questionable hits. <laughs> right. Some may say I've shot too many animals in questionable spots. I, you know, I, I got a video to show you when we're done. Yeah, right. <laughs> so he told me, I'm like, all right, well, let's talk about it. What happened? I'm like, all right. And he said, well, it looked like it tripped. I saw a blood spot, but it was on the top of his back. I'm like, okay, is that the entrance? You know, we're working through all these yeah, different scenarios, right. you know, and this is where I think a lot of new hunters. You can learn. Like bow hunter CSI. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you got to, you know, and like, if you're the shooter, everybody's been in that position where they're like, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's like, you got to remember that. But then that's why I was telling Braden, all right, tell me everything you know. And then I'm piecing it together. I'm like, all right. And I just said, hey, minimum of an hour and I'm going over to that lip, that, that edge. Like, I don't even want to go look. And so, you know, I'm like, because he could just be bedded up right there. Right. Maybe it was a too far back, you know, because it wasn't like he saw him tumble. He just stumbled well yeah you put an arrow in anything and they're probably going to f- stumble a little bit so that's when i was like all right man let's just relax let's chill out let's you know just just relax you know and so we walk up to the edge and i'm like all right show me where you shot and then he did the same thing and i'm like right there and i like range i'm like right here and he's like no 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 that one i'm like that's not 66 yards <laughs> And at, what was it? Ninety. It was Eighty-three. Eighty-three actual, actual yeah, sixty. Like so you had to. Line distance. So, so you had to, It was like thirty-seven degrees, thirty-eight degrees, something like. Yeah. That. So you had to cut a ton, but so I was like, oh geez, I don't like. I'm like, all right, are you sure? Like, I'm like, you know. <laughs> so going, really? Yeah. So then we just walk around, but this is like the best. So like, I'm like Tom Braden because oh, it's steep. Speaking about trying to get down, get down. Yeah. Well, that was we shouldn't have gone down. That was one of those where like, oh, we'll go down that grassy slope. We came up, but. You had to go farther down, down, and then come back up the the bottom of the basin to get to where the ram was. We're like, no, we'll just go down where these rams are. That was a bad, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll touch on that. But so we walk around the edge, and I'm like, Braden's arrow ready to go because it is. I mean, it's a, a sheer cliff, like straight down. Yeah. But like down is like we're range. It's only like a hundred yards. So if you saw the ram there, he could have got off another shot. It'd have been tough. And so he's peeking up over the edge, and we're kind of going down and. I'm like looking with my binoculars of where it ran, and I just see this like huge like boulder, and it's just covered in blood. And I'm like, oh, and Braden doesn't see it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, all right. And then I'm like with my binos. Now you're messing with him. Yeah. Oh, and then I see I see the ram dead. He he didn't go over like 150 yards. And I'm like, hey, Braden. And I think you look at me like, don't mess with me. Right don't mess with me right now. <laughs> and it was just it was piled up there, yeah. and no, it was awesome. And then we we you know we went over to the edge, made the the hero phone calls, told everyone that's down. But yeah. that's when we came back and went down that chute. Th- that was probably the sketchiest part, like because there was no other way for like I would have to go down and like if he rolled a rock, like it's gonna take me out. It right. was we had yeah, to time it right. Yeah, because well, we want to go see if his arrow, like we wanted to but see we where. Look for my arrow, right? right. I always want to look for my arrow, see you know, kind of what if I can find anything and get any information off that, right? Yeah. For, for future or for see how things work. Yeah. And that or cheap things. that broadhead too. Yeah. Yeah. Things well, are we, expensive. We never found it. So. No, we never Either found any of, parts of it. Really. 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 Yeah. They so. disintegrated on that mountain. But. <laughs> That's all right. But, but no, it was, that was. That's that was, awesome. That was one of my. I mean, honestly, that was like. Obviously, you kill something, you fill a tag, it's great. But, yeah. like, for me, that was just, like, I mean, it's just, like, I hate you. Oh, it's an adventure. But that was so cool. And then, like, actually <laughs> filling a tag, like, spending that time seeing them. Number one, sheep aren't that big. Like, I thought they were much bigger. They're they're pretty small. They just yeah. look like a like a like, 44 gallon drum with little legs on them. You yeah. Little yeah, lamb yeah. legs on them. Yeah. So you just, you guys just, uh, uh, you got them and then you take them out whole or did you guys piece them out? And No, we yeah. were, we quartered them up. Yeah. Debone, we deboned him. Right. We did? Yeah. Stripped him off the bone. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Know. I thought you, I just figured you had to do that. No, I don't remember. <laughs> on, on, the, on, the, on the carcass. I think uh, I remember doing it. I don't know. I think at that point I was just like, let's get the hell off this mountain. Right. The thing was is that broadhead, uh, where it entered, when it, where it exited, it, it blew up the front, almost the whole front shoulder. Yeah. Almost zero. Yeah. Zero meat off that. And then uh, part of the back, part of one of the back straps, because it entered... They were, they were facing directly away from me and entered right between the shoulder blades or just behind the shoulder blades next to his spine and then punched out oh, right in yeah. right yeah. his armpit. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, just, and, it was and devastating. The hole that that thing made it then on the back end was just... It was it, huge. It, just, cause it, just it ripped, shredded him. Yeah, because it ripped, too, you know, ripped from his elbow back up. So the thing was like that long. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
that's that's awesome i remember i was i was in the shop like i think it was a week or so or pretty close like i think it was the next week and you were there and i'm like kind of asked you a couple questions like ah oh, well the feeling is starting to come back in my feet yeah <laughs> like, no my feet were uh after that pack out my feet were were, were pretty beat up yeah pretty yeah beat up after yeah that one. i mean well, after that whole trip that oh was, that was brutal hauling it out even to get it back to camp well you took the the head and the cape and i mean and i took the meat which isn't much but that was a bitch just to even get back to our camp but i will say like well the pictures i'm sure you guys have seen i mean like i've shown so many and they're like it looks fake like it could not have been a better like time of when the animal died and we got to it to like do i mean it's awesome perfect sunlight yeah it was was just crazy really well that's awesome timing worked out really well yeah Yeah. that hike out i mean you were i was gassed you were really bad and you hadn't even gotten in and then dana and was it ray yeah they came to help him out and I left because I was supposed to catch a flight the next so he morning. Took, he took my truck. Left. Right. Yep. And I remember, like, doing the timing in my head. I'm like, okay, it's probably going to take him four hours to get in and then five hours to get out, and they're not out yet. And I'm calling them. I'm texting them. I was, like, ready to, like – I was like, okay, if they're not out by, like, midnight, I'm calling – like, or I'm going back in. Yeah. Like, I was going to call Fred and be like, dude, we got to go look for these. Like, I, I'm sure they're not dead, but, like, something right. bad happened. Right. Yeah. And then I don't know when you guys got out. I mean, it, it was – It just took – I mean, going back to kind of what you are talking about, pacing and stuff, is, is me, You, if you want, don't put me in the front because right. I'm just going to go. Yeah. Like, I just put my head down and I just go. Like, yeah. it drives – drives dana nuts but <laughs> i just it's I, I get dumb and i just go yeah, yeah. so joel gets that way when he's frustrated like, <laughs> we, i call it an angry march <laughs> he just puts his head down and it doesn't matter how much it hurts he just goes and i'm yeah. sucking wind behind him like dude slow down but at that point i was so exhausted that it, i just yeah I, I just needed i just that was how all, yeah. that's all i did well, I, that, that day i only ate it's yeah, crazy that was i ate like they brought me a sandwich when they when they came in and I met them in the parking lot. They brought me a sandwich and but that's all I ate that day. It was like yeah. full focus mode, and then yeah. I was so amped even after we got out at what, eleven o'clock when we ended up yeah. getting out. I drove home. I, yeah. I was the one who drove home. Right. Like, like, Let's go. They didn't really like they're out, you know. And I'm like, well, I'm still up. The like, adrenaline was still pumping. Yeah. It was still going. Yeah. I'm like, I can ride with this lightning for three more hours, <laughs> you know, three yeah. or four more hours to get me home, and well, then it's gonna be. <laughs> I remember that the year that we packed i think it was dusty's elk the from down, from down in the yeah. coli yeah and and it, again same thing it's like it's downhill the whole way to get down in there and it was a morning where it was like our last morning and these guys head out and this is before like we had any like we're using old school pack racks right like yeah. Yeah. gotta go back to camp to get the pack racks and no, like, but, uh who was back at camp somebody was back at camp and brought the packs to us me yeah. Yeah. yeah it was you? me. Because, like, they go down in there. And yeah, because like, his toe was bothering him. He's like, I ain't going to go down there. And then Dusty shoots one yeah. and called Joel, like, hey, dude, bring the racks down. So he <laughs> and the racks down. And, and I, He's like, got I just, four racks on his back. Right. I, I packed all four of them on my back because I, I got up that morning and, like, I broke my toe when I was younger and it's, like, arthritic now. And, like, thankfully from, like, getting into, like, Krispies and whatever, which has been my godsend, whether or not I'm not obviously – Sponsors, whatever. You know, but if they all, want to, all of our, all of our, all of our sponsors right? would be a great place for but them like to reach until, out to us. Until I got into those, like that's why I've been such a huge supporter of them. It's like I go two, three days of side hilling and contouring and shit, and my, and my toe would just get so cranky. Like I'm like, dude, I gotta take a morning off. Like, right, get it, let it freaking recover right. a little bit. And so it was our last day of the hunt, and I knew we were packing up that day. And those guys are bombing in there. I'm like, someone's gonna shoot something. I'll just fucking <laughs> wait here. And sure enough, like about hour, two hours later. Hey, uh, can you bring the pack racks down? Yeah. And I'm like, I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah. And but same thing. So we come out, go down there, come out, and and I'm the same way. Like Darby and I were out in the front, and he's like, "You want to stop?" And I'm like, "No, dude, yeah. just keep going. I'm like, yeah. just just keep putting one foot in front of yeah. the other. Let's get the hell out of here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dusty and I are in the back, just lollygagging. Yeah, just having a good old time, stopping every hundred yards. Yeah. And, and See, like, we were not we lollygagging. Good conversation. Either. See, that's the thing is I, I try to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe likes to talk. When I when I get in that mode, I'm like, yeah, just mouth shut and I'm going. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk. What about uh, like epic hunt? Like, what's what's your a list for you in, in terms of this year? Well, or, or just in general in terms of like your uh, your favorite hunt so far outside of that, like your own. Um, God. 
you, you know, honestly, like I, I would assume it, it, it's going to be the the hunt that I had a few years ago with my dad, where I got him onto a mule deer, and like we spot and stalked this mule deer, which was you know, and I we went up over this ridge, and you know, the whole thing of he's a whitetail hunter, tree stand guy, right? Yeah, you know, he's sixty, probably at the time sixty four, sixty three, whatever, and I'm like, oh, we can get on this deer, and he's like, I don't know, and like we're running around, and this was in South Dakota, so it was it was just like yeah. like little drainages, but uh, but man, it was just. You know, that's probably one of my most memorable hunts just because we were right next to each other and I ranged. I'm like 55 and he just smokes it, see it fall over, you know. Cool. But, you know, for me, I just love, and Brayden and I have been talking about it a lot, the high country mule deer, you know. And, and unfortunately, you know, Colorado's switching over where it's opener on the second, you know, whereas before it could be that last week of August, you know, puts us at a little bit of disadvantage because once they shed their velvet, a little bit tougher. But, Man, I just can't get enough of that. I mean, that is like that's that's what I I dream about. Like that's what I want to do. I don't last year I think I hunted like the 3 weeks for this one buck and then like everyone's like, "You know, elk hunt." I'm like, "I don't really care." <laughs> like like it's cool, but like See, I'm I'm the opposite cuz yeah, I'm like, so, "You're going to so go many... hunt deer." And I'm like, "Nah, I don't really care." Yeah. Like Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so the, the year before the, the the guy goes out and kills he hunted out for one day and he kills a 355 36. no 3 338 337 yeah we, were, we said we were gonna exaggerate yeah it was 404 yeah. 404 <laughs> yeah i do have one of those stories for this yeah no but like the well that's just a crazy thing two years ago it was like i couldn't i would just hang 180 yeah it was like i just like oh it's yeah. third day of mule deer season kill one and i didn't even, i was just like but that one honestly I was, I've said this before multiple times. I was so burnt out of hunting after hunting so many times with Fred. Like, I almost didn't even buy an elk tag or a mule. I was like, I'm done. Like, I don't even care. Like, I don't, <laughs> I'm so burnt out. And then I go shoot that. And then, like, I, you know, first well, three that, hours yeah, of elk hunting. Whole, is that what it is? We just got to stop caring. Is that when we're going to start showing Is that so. when animals are going to start showing I up? I think right. so. Yeah. That, like, that, I don't really want to go. Oh, look at that trophy bowl. That, yeah. That that year, it was, uh, it was his karma year or something because. He was he was so upset before. He was like, I didn't get any tags. I'm not even gonna hunt here this year. I'm just gonna help Brad, and that's it. Da, da, da. Next thing you know, this, this giant animals just hit the ground. It's like well, I don't know what's happening. I just I don't know. What do, what do you want me to say? Yeah. Well, I, last year I helped you out, and I guess I well I didn't get much good karma. I missed a lot though. I had opportunities. <laughs> I had great opportunities. Uh, I got a lot, a lot of practice. practice. That's been my last like two years. Just the same same where it's like he's talking about you know that put my head down whatever and that's how like the last two years for me has felt where it's like we're 30 yards from a bull last year you know scream at him he comes flying in with his head down stops behind this huge you know pine tree and i'm like sitting there like all right as soon as he takes two more steps and of course you know murphy's law he turns around just parallels it straight back to me onto private ground i'm like son of a you know yep. just ready to lose it and yep. then last year was kind of the same thing like we kick a bull out of his bed he walks down here i got him on film and he's standing in just this like canopy of just twigs and branches and stuff and he's just staring at us and i'm like of course why yeah, wouldn't man. you you know it's like that's how every encounter seems like it's been for the last like couple of seasons and like he see me at the end of like a week long or i just like head down i'm just going like you gotta be kidding me yeah it's, you know? when it's when it's the last day of the hunt yeah and nothing happens it's angry joel time yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's what like last year taught me is like how close like just like one one step one yeah. you know because like the year prior it was everything worked out perfectly right. yeah. you know I I you know the mule deer and I did miss him once so like that might be my mo but then like the elk came out so perfect and yeah. I like even talk about luck I can't even glance my ear off a, off a tree like a little bit and it's he, called, I, I come, he called the bank called the bank called shot the bank. <laughs> and it's still, and it, but it wasn't like bad but I I, yeah. I I don't want to like sugarcoat it I did have it and that luck yeah this last year I was on a giant mule deer like I would say right at that 200 mark and I missed him three times but I was on him like six and it's like just be a better shot right. all of a sudden my season's great I had a big bull in, in an area that would have been ridiculous to even pull it out of but it was a like over the counter bull was like i mean it was Heck probably yeah. pushing that 315 mark right and it was just like all, right, all he had to do was just come in and like just didn't work out you know yeah. and then south dakota i miss a, i miss a giant buck there and i'm like yeah. you know if i would have just capitalized on the opportunities 
I would have had another great season. Right. You yeah. know, and that's where I think a lot of people, you sit there and you're like, oh, it's just this. It's just like, all right, well, what can you learn from that? Yeah, And then do sure. better. And then, because it's going to happen. If you put yourself in the opportunity, like the people yeah. that bitch and moan about not killing things yeah. and they're on the couch or they're yeah. not doing this, it's like, okay, well, that's different. You know, I'm putting yeah. myself out there and it's like, it's going to turn around. Like, yeah. you know, because everyone said, they're like, Joe, don't put so much pressure on yourself for you know, a follow-up season. Like, I had so many people say that. <laughs> and and even after the season, they're like, oh, not that great of a season. I'm like, uh, I shot a damn near a booner of pronghorn and a good, decent whitetail in Kansas. And then, I like, with you, and I'm like, I don't know, pretty fucking good to me. Like, I, like yeah. not a lot of people are doing that, you know? Yeah. No, we get so, caught up. I mean, we get caught up in that. You know, people ask sure. me, people ask me how, how my season was last year, and I'm like, it was all right because the last taste, the last thing I had of the season was I, I, I hit a white tail in Kansas on the last day. You know, just bad shot, windy day, really windy day, bad shot. Tracked him, didn't find him. But that was like the last taste of the season. Yeah. Right off. I'm like, oh, it was all right. You know, did this, did that. And they're like, you killed your ram. And I'm like, I did. That's right. So, so it's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I lose that. I have to bring you myself keep back. Things in yeah, I gotta, yeah. gotta, gotta keep totally. Perspective. There's been years yeah. where we haven't obviously haven't killed anything, but we've had plenty of encounters. And yep. Sometimes that feels like a win. Like you can feel like you're in the right place, yeah. and you see them. And it may be just the opportunities. Like a couple of years ago, we had a, a bull come charging in, and he stopped right in front of a tree. Hey, and the tree, the, it was a down tree log, and, and it was came yeah. right across yeah. his vitals. He had his head down. I've never seen Like, it would have been perfect. Right. Right? But, like, <laughs> it, just in that moment, just things didn't work out for us, right? right. And we get done with that hunt, and you're like, we're disappointed. But, God, we had a, we called a bull in. Yeah, he dumped his cows. He came right to us. Like, it was exciting. It was yep. fun. Right. Like, you, yeah. just because you don't kill anything doesn't mean it's not a good experience. Well, and you think of all those people that you talk to that are like, oh, I was out there for a week and didn't see anything. Right. Yeah. I didn't have any. It's like. It's not easy, like especially no. out here, public land, over the counter, you know, you know, dry units, I will say it's a little different game, but like over the counter public land, I mean, it's hard. Yeah. And like a lot of people need to start understanding that, that, or you know what, hey, go to Montana, get out of Colorado, you know, wink, wink, like <laughs> right. it's getting so busy anyways. But <laughs> yeah. like, I do think people are starting to, you know, only hold themselves to a level of success of comparing themselves to others or yeah. just to kill. Thanks, right? Instagram. No, yeah, exactly. Right. right. Just, just yeah, I mean, all the, the hunting shows and everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to walk into the woods yeah. and there's going to be a 400 class bull sitting in front of right. me. Like, yeah. eh, maybe not. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, like our, our mule deer hunt from this year. Like yeah. we, we, you know, we spent all the time we you know shot all the footage and all this other stuff and and you know if you haven't watched it obviously i mean we'll show you guys kind of that's what i think that's what he was talking about like oh, yeah. afterwards but and we're like it turned out to be one of those hunts where at the end of it you go oh man and we you know hit hit a buck a really nice buck and uh and we're like well what are we going to do and i'm like well i think we should talk about that in itself right which is like the experience the journey the opportunity and even more so like we lose the buck which was like it's the worst feeling ever yeah. right and i'm like let's put it out there and we have people that like replied back to us and like hey man thanks for showing that because like most people just get the fairy tale ending holding the horns and all this other stuff right and i was like i think it's worthless just you know showing it and like yep. and that you know and then of course you have the other people like oh man all that and like that's how it ends and i'm like sorry man that's like, how that, it ends that's, that's, that's how it ends that's, that's, that's how it ended right? that, yeah, that's, how that, it end. that's how that that's how that chapter ended right so right we learned something from that right yeah um, well, not every hunt is a success, and not every you know shot is a kill, right? Yep. right? And then uh, again, it's that's the realistic side of hunting, right? Versus again the fairy tale Instagram, YouTube video, you know, television productions yep. that are happening. It, you know, I because I took the shot, and you know, I think Joel was way more devastated after it, you know, and we lost it than I was. But it took me a little while to kind of process. You know, yeah. what all had happened. And, and, you know, I came out the next day with my wife because we had to go back in town and you had to work. And um, my I boss, got, the yeah. fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got home and, and I was like, man, you know, we were going to go back out, but Joel had to do this. And my wife goes, well, I'll go with you. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. So the next morning we got up at butt crack of dawn, drove all the way back down there and spent another five, six hours looking for the animal. Like we, we put our, our miles on and right. we gave it you you did know, the right thing. chase. Yeah. yeah. And it just still didn't work out. You know, we had three sets of eyes, four sets of eyes on looking for it in the specific area and just didn't happen. Right. You know, and it was disappointing. Yeah. But, you know, I 
we gave it the best opportunity that we could. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. We gave it a, a, a fair shake. And that's why I think like Instagram, social media in general is such a, you know, people start comparing and you look at these guys online and, you know, it, oh, look at, they kill this, they kill that. They have no idea. Did they miss? Did they right. wound a few? Like, I'm probably a little bit more open with, at least maybe not on social media, but with my friends, be like, yep, I missed this, I whipped this. Like, <laughs> that buck, I whipped three times in a row. It was like within like two minutes. Right. And people are like, what? Like, and I'm like, yeah. I'm just open with yeah. it. It's like, it, it happens. We're not yeah. all perfect shots. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm and not even. Even in the moment, you right. might think you're a perfect shot, but when adrenaline kicks in and you're shaking like a leaf on a tree, yeah. yep. right? Things happen. You, yeah. you, you both have seen me shoot, so that's, that's yeah. apparent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and that's the thing. It's just like, you know, I don't know. Maybe I say it too much to make myself. Like, I, I use it as motivation. Be like, all right, I can be a better shot or right. try to be better. Right. Yeah. I talk to Braden all the time. But you know, how many, like, that one mule deer, I, like, called you. I'm like, I'm done. Because I missed, like, two others. <laughs> and you said it. You're like, dude, it's just a deer. Why are you getting all so worked up about it? And then the next time, it, you know, yeah. it smoked him. And I was like, huh. Oh, I think if you stay humble, too, right, mm-hmm. your expectations. Yeah. You know, if you go in there, you know, rip roar and, like, I'm the best shot in the world, right? Then you shoot and you shatter your confidence. Right. right? As opposed yeah. to if you go in with kind of lower expectations, you go, yeah, I, that's, I did this bad on this shot. The next one, I'm going to do it better. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's part of, I mean, that's part of the game for me, right, is, is the challenge of, being uh, trying to eliminate it. it's going to happen yeah. trying to trying to reduce and eliminate that by learning to manage that that adrenaline yeah. right if we don't get the adrenaline why are we doing it yeah. sure so so anybody who says they don't i'm like well why are you doing yeah. this find, yeah. find something more exciting you know um but we, we go for that adrenaline that that's right. that's what we go for we spend all this time blood sweat and tears you know for those few precious seconds of yeah. that adrenaline um and, and learning to manage and control that that's that's it's hard very, it's hard but it's, it's hard but it's hard to practice when you can practice right, right. you know there, there's some things you can do like you know there, there's events we have like the alpha there's yeah there, there's things out there that you can practice and, and get yeah. a, a simulation of it yeah you know i played professional baseball yeah, for right. 10 years right and then, you know i'm pitching in front of forty thousand people and yeah, but you know butterflies are going right and so we talk a lot about just breath work you know like mm-hmm. right. it's just like physical preparation right we can go out and shoot and we can go into the gym and train that physical preparation, we're training our body or we're training our our, um, our motor senses to, to pull back and do something consistently. Mm-hmm. But your brain is also a muscle, right? And, you, yep. and if you want to train it, you have to be consistent. With, just as consistent as when you shoot and when you lift in the gym, you've got to learn how to yeah. calm yourself down. Right. right. You know, and it's always like I always told people, one of my first coaches in, big, in uh, professional baseball goes, if you're not nervous, something's wrong. Right. Right. Like you don't have those butterflies. Something's wrong. Yeah. And before every start, yeah, you get butterflies. Then you throw that first pitch, the adrenaline kicks in, and then it's like, all right, it's game on. Yep. Right. Yeah. So it's how do you get from, you know, how do you get, when you get those butterflies at that moment, how do you get into that, that state where you're like, all right, now I'm calm and now I can do what I in need to do. In the zone. Right. right. Without having to shoot, a, you know, a shot first. Yeah. Right. And yeah. miss and go, okay, now we're getting like, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. like the, yeah. you know, the animal clearly you're, left already. You're a well, uh, golfer B analogy, right? It's yes. Like yeah. You're you always, golf, golfer you B is always shank better the first than golfer one, A. And then, oh, yeah. and then you're like, yeah. oh, I'm going to hit another one. Then right. you hit it straight. And you're like, why didn't I do that the first time? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. No. But that's something that I actually did, like, this year, I was talking to you about. It's like, I was back home in Minnesota, and, and there's not, I mean, there's big deer, but where I'm from in, like, northern central Minnesota, there's just, it's just, the, the, you know, shooting a 130-inch deer there, that's a trophy. Yeah. Like, you know, we were looking at those in Kansas, man, like, ah, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, but, um, w- you know, I got punks, onto this deer. Little punks, right? Yeah, little punks. <laughs> and uh, I got onto this deer, and I lost my mind. Like I and I've been known to get some pretty good buck fever, right. and I'm like just shaking like crazy. And this buck's coming in; it's got a drop time, like a little kicker, and it was gonna come right at like ten yards. And like one's like definitely my biggest deer, and I just like and like I think oh, it yeah. heard my arrow draw back, <laughs> and it just stopped and then ran out and stopped at 55. Gave me a great shot. I whiffed on that. Right. I'm like, oh my god. And then I tell and I'm like I'm like. I'm gonna sell my bow. I'm done. Like, I'm <laughs> devastated. Like, I do. I do. I get. I get. There so, seems to be a trend here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I then quit. The, right. And then the next night, I go to a different area, and just luck, he comes right in, and I don't even get nervous at all. I was like in straight kill mode. Right. Yeah. I ultimately hit the buck, lost the buck. I know he's alive because I had him on camera. I'll show you guys a shot. I think you guys will be like crazy at how it survived. I yeah, still I, don't I, know. I'm, I'm still it's crazy, right. but. I called Braden and I was telling my dad, I'm like, 
I got to find a medium. Like, because <laughs> either I'm on a 10 out of 10 going nuts, right. or I'm baseline, like, I'm just a Killing psychopath. Right. right. Like, I have Snyder. zero. You're American psycho yeah, yeah. at this point. Yeah. Right. 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 And I'm, I'm Patrick Bateman up right. on tree stand. <laughs> and I'm like, that wasn't fun for me either, but right. I was so locked in on killing that deer. Right. It's like, I think that you got to manage that. And that's yeah. the thing of like <clears throat> being a professional athlete. You learn how to do that. Yeah. Like you, your mind. But you're gets also in doing there. it night in, night out. You know, right. a lot of times. Whereas when you're hunting, you only get one chance, right? Yeah. Totally. I got to throw a hundred pitches. So if I mess up on one, like that, big deal. Right. Right. But when you're hunting, you only get one shot. You know, you only can draw that bow back maybe one time, and that's the only opportunity. Especially if you're a public land hunter. Yeah. You know, if you spook them, miss them, whatever, you may never see that see bull the, again. Yeah. Right. right? Yep. And now your now your whole week of hunting is ruined, right? Versus. Yep. You know, I, I threw a bad pitch. Maybe I gave up a home run. I'm going to throw 99 more. See, maybe, you... maybe that's the problem thinking, though, is is you put it all on, because I did that for a long time. So you yeah. put it all on that arrow, right? You yeah. just yeah. think that way. Well, then there, that you just built this extra pressure because you're right. like, I only get this one arrow. Right, right. If you're like, oh, it's just like just shooting another arrow. Yeah, sure. You know, it's like, well, I have five more. You know, right. my quiver, I can shoot five more. Yeah. You know, so. It's like I need to visualize the. The targets from no limit and be like yeah dude i've hit this thing a million yep, times exactly. right you know whatever yeah. it takes but that that extra pressure i always put on myself too I'm like you know this may be the only opportunity yeah. it may be but right. and we know that we accept that but, yeah but thinking about that extra i'm like i don't need yeah. to burn up that energy yeah, well, maybe have, you need to have a little have bit of that space, like you know? cold-blooded mentality yeah. right yeah when you draw back and be like you know instead of this is so important right be like this is just another shot yep, yep. right like yeah. I've, well, I've done this a million times we all know fred eichler yeah. Um, I had a, my buddy, he does his, all of his, uh, video and production. And I did a video with him for Numa. I don't know if you guys saw it like four or five years ago. And I was so nervous. I'm like, I can't miss, I can't miss, I can't miss. <laughs> and he was talking to Fred and, and Fred Eichler would told him, um, be like, Oh, just tell the guy, just act like it's not going to happen. If a buck's coming in, just tell him to keep telling himself it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and then your mind will be like, it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to happen. Right. And then you'll go into like, you know, just just kill mode of like, you know, just doing what you, you know how right. to do. <clears throat> and it did. Like, I, I still got that adrenaline kick. But after, like on the video, like I lost it. But yeah. it was like during it, I'm like, there's no way this is going to happen. I'm right. like, there's right. no too way. Good to be true. It's, it's too good to be right. true. And I did. And I've done that a few times. But now I think like my mind knows. I'm like, oh, you're trying to trick yourself. It ain't working, <laughs> it ain't working this time. <laughs> like, but it's right. also something good to like new hunter, yeah. beginning hunter, yeah. change your mindset. What on happens what's when, happening. You, when you tell yourself it's not going to happen and then it doesn't happen? Yeah. Well, <laughs> then you're not let down. Then you're not let down. It's true. Like oh, I knew I knew it wasn't. Like wow, happen. well, what if I had a more positive mindset? It was gonna happen, right? And yeah. then I, yeah, yeah, that's you start true. Playing your mind games. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. why we got to go in the psychology's office up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got to yeah. sit down and do we'll that. Go, we'll go talk get to some Steph. breathing exercises. We'll, we'll it, do that breathing yeah. exercises. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. we should actually talk to her about that. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. She's no, amazing. Be, yeah. She she works with like our our NFL combine guys, and you go through six eight weeks of her doing like she does stress tests with them where just crazy stuff where she's tracking like biorhythm and heart rate and like how you go from like sympathetic and parasympathetic based on you know stress and all these other things and so she'll do like intake interviews and figure out like what triggers you right hmm. like to be to be stressed you know right and you start seeing things change and she starts giving them strategies so she'll do like a stress test where she's monitoring all this and she'll like throw their hand in like a bucket of ice and you see them go like and then she starts drilling with stuff and then over like a two-month period of time you'll see these guys just like make these crazy transformations wow. and how they're able to handle stuff to deal with stress and yeah handle stress and adapt it's 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 pretty cool but like from, you know it's across the hallway i mean i don't know why we would ever think about <laughs> using those it's types kind of, of a far walk <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, right. the light's never on so no, you're right but uh yeah. very cool well um she'd be interested in to hear from on on here so yeah, yeah 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 very true very true um well i think we could probably talk all day i would assume and obviously yeah. we could uh we'd have you guys back any any time and uh and it's good to, to get you over and get an opportunity to meet and and obviously love to do it more often and For sure um so and Braden, you know we, we we'll see be seeing you, you. yeah <laughs> normally so we'll, at, at, at certain points i should points. probably bring my bow, bow in sooner than later right get ahead of the, the rush get ahead of the rush yeah. yeah that way i can start shooting earlier you yeah, know when yeah. they like that they want you to come in right around that august like <laughs> yeah first or second week in august <laughs> that's when yeah. i want to tune my broadheads yes yeah yeah, yeah. 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 they get they they're thrilled about that well, yeah. well actually we're, we're probably going to see more of you this year because i don't know if you saw that that the big green fence outside 
uh-huh. when you pulled in that just that, got that used to be that, our range. that was our range oh yeah. so that whole thing that fence just got put up that's why that's why we weren't we were, haven't been there normally we were over you know we come over numerous times you know a week a month whatever and shoot so we could get out in range well we can shoot 50 60 yards right out the door and then they just put up that fence like a month ago uh, so now we're like gonna now have to get a, an angle grinder and cut us yeah. a door you, you yeah. guys uh did you guys know the old No Limits used to be right down the road from here? I remember you telling well, me that. They, they, where the old shop was. Yeah, I remember you telling <laughs> yeah. me that. Right so. there in that, um, oh, I forget what was on the building, um, but that red brick building. Mm-hmm. Right yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's a small world. It's a sparkling neighborhood. It is. It can be. <laughs> this is this is one you guys were telling me about. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. been better, but yeah. uh, I've noticed the, uh, we have occasional the, visitors, the visitors have moved in. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well. They Imp- gotta go. So I gotta send them somewhere out of downtown. <laughs> so <laughs> impromptu bonfires <laughs> yeah. that happen outside of our door yeah. with exploding propane bottles. No big deal. It's no yeah. big, no biggie. <laughs> We've been there before. <laughs> but um, All right. well, thank you guys so much for coming in today. Yeah, um, absolutely. Good to, good to see you. Nice, nice to, to finally meet you. For and sure. uh, we appreciate your time. Obviously. Um, Love to have you back anytime again, and uh, who knows, maybe. If some. people want to uh, follow you guys on social media yeah. and see all your trophy uh, <laughs> shots, how would they uh, go about doing that? Mine's just uh, Joe.Kavanaugh. That's Instagram. Yeah, that's Facebook's kind of... you know, just my name, but right. I don't really post much on there. So You don't cross post? No. Uh, at Braden underscore one, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Just follow Rut Life for Braden. Rut Life. Rut, Rut Life. Yeah. Rut yeah. Life. So we'll, we'll be sure to put that stuff in the show notes. and Cool. That, that way you'll get thousands of new followers oh, i'm sure i can't wait us, so. they'll be yeah. they'll be pleasantly disappointed i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us today we appreciate it we'll see you next time